All right, so uh, my name is Lamarcus Hicks, um, Corners coach at Eastern Michigan University. Um, I've been here since February. Um, so I didn't get a chance to uh, get a lot of stuff on tape. Uh, we'll talk about some DB fundamentals and philosophy today. Uh, but the last couple of years, I, I uh, was at Bowling Green uh, State University. So some of the film that you'll see today will be from Bowling Green. Uh, you know, with the unfortunate circumstances of the pandemic, we only had one practice day at Eastern Michigan when I arrived. So, again, I don't have a lot of tape from Eastern Michigan, uh, but you can see uh, we will we do have the block E and the logos here uh, on the slides or whatever. So, you guys are, are, are interested in some DB play? We'll we'll talk some DB play, some philosophy, and just some everyday drills here in this uh, this session here. All right, all right, so. The first thing that I'll do is is uh, just talk about uh, defensive backs um, in my my mind. Um, it's a, a magnified position, uh, and that's one thing that I always like to share with my guys is is that we are a magnified position. All right, so no matter who's in the stadium, you know, no matter how much football they may know, um, we are a magnified position. But they do recognize when we when we are making good plays. Um, they do recognize the good players. And they do recognize too, you know, if a guy on the field is not doing his job and, and, and uh, you know, giving up plays. So, you know, people tend to think that, you know, when people are giving up plays, they're not as good of a player. And been playing defensive back, um, that's a much easier thing that you can spot, uh, regardless of where you are in the stadium and how much football you may know. Uh, defensive backs have to be true competitors, all right? We have to be competitive at, every, at everything we do. Uh, you know, whether that's playing football, whether that's playing PlayStation or whatever they might like to play, whether that's being in a classroom, um, competing with other students in the classroom to get the highest grade on a test, we have to be true competitors, all right? Anytime we're challenged to something, uh, we got to be be willing to, to uh, accept that challenge and uh, be ready to make plays, all right? Uh, ball disruption, that's one thing that we have to be outstanding at, at, at playing this position. Um, every single time you get your hand on the football, if you touch a football as a defensive back, it's a big play, all right? Uh, whether that's making a PBU, whether that's getting an interception, uh, whether that's stripping the ball out, you know, causing a fumble, or whether that's scooping a fumble, if you get your hands on the football, it's a big play. So, again, we have to uh, embrace that. We have to, uh, you know, we have to look forward to being disruptive when it, when it comes to uh, – um, the football and, and getting our hands on the ball, all right? Uh, key elements to corner play. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about both of them. Um, I'll start out with the corners on the outside. Uh, but the key elements to corner play, one, and these are things that I look for too when I'm recruiting, all right? I look for guys that have, you know, some short area equipments uh, and, and change of direction. And when I say these key elements, you know, when I'm looking for things like this when I'm recruiting, uh, you know, I know some guys are, are a little bit sharper in certain areas than others, and, and some guys may be lacking a little bit more than other guys. And, you know, some things that we can coach, uh, we can't coach into a guy, but some things we can't coach into a guy. And, and um, you know, teaching the guy how to move, I think we can teach that. Uh, but short area quickness and ability to change direction, you know, I do think there's some natural – uh, some naturalness to it, and, and that's one of the things I look for. That's one of the things that that uh, you have to have to play corner, all right? And then long speed, um, you know, no matter how many drills we do and, and uh, you know, no matter how many techniques we can teach, you know, if a guy has – he's got great speed to start, man, that's always a, a plus. Uh, ball skills, got to be able to judge a football. You got to be able to finish, all right? And that's what I was just talking about on the last slide, uh, ball disruption. You got to be really, really good at the top of the route. All right. So you got to be able to finish. Discipline eyes and reaction. All right. Now, again, that's one thing that I look for when I'm recruiting a guy. Um, but I do understand too that, you know, we be we may be able to help a guy out and and uh, you know, teach him a little bit more and teach him where his eyes should be. Uh, but again, discipline eyes, if a guy has a good base of knowledge and know where his eyes should be and he's not getting beat on double moves here and there, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, that's a good start to have. Um, he's got to have some instincts uh, and be instinctive. 
Um, and then the last thing that you got to have, uh, one of the key elements to play corner is confidence. All right. And then a lot of these things really, you know, helps with that last thing, uh, that last key element that I'm talking about, uh, being confident in your ability to make plays and finish plays. And, and uh, again, uh, you know, do all the things that it takes to play the position. All right. Uh, now we'll talk about the safety. I like to call the safety the field general because, you know, in, in most systems, the guys that are making the calls on the defense are the Mike linebacker and the safeties, um, especially when you're in a split safety system. They have to make the calls to their side. You know, whatever concept you play coverage wise on that side, they got to communicate with everybody on the field, make sure they all lined up. Um, they have to communicate down in distance and, and, and all different types of things uh, to give the, the defensive players uh, just knowledge and, and make sure everybody's on the same page. So. With that being said, they have to be great communicators, all right? The field general has to be a communicator, all right? I think that that they have to be um, a great leader, um, have some leadership ability and leadership skills. Um, and that's one thing that we do focus on and we try to uh, to teach our team here is, is how to, to communicate and how to lead. Um, safeties have to, be un, have to be instinctive and they definitely have to uh, have some understanding of the game. Um, they got to have some type of football knowledge uh, when they're out on the field because they got to know it all, all right? Safeties are, are, you know, some of the only guys on the field that are asked to uh, cover a 260-pound tight end, uh, cover a slot receiver who's 180 pounds and quick as a cat. Um, they also have to tackle that 220-pound running back. So they have to have some versatility down there. You can see it at the bottom. But again, they have to have understanding, and that's what the understanding of the game and the instincts and the concepts and all that stuff can help them out, all right? They have to have physical presence, be able to tackle in space. Um, they gotta have some range and be able to play off the hash. And then they also have to have ball skills as well, um, just like we talked about with the corner um, and ability to judge the football down the field. And we talked about the versatility there, all right? So with all that being said, it's, these are the things that I focus on as far as development. All right. Uh, the things that I focus on is, is one, you know, the, the change of direction of a player and his control. And when I say control, I mean his body control um, and his eye control. Uh, just like we just talked about with, with a player knowing, you know, where he should be looking, where his eyes should be, what is he keying, um, and, and how is he going to make a play, uh, you know, so, and then the next thing is, is uh, physicality. Um, that's one other thing that we focus on is the physicality. Um, trying to help develop that. And, uh, and to be honest with you, I think they have to have some of that coming into it. Um, but we can help them uh, by teaching them the proper techniques to help enhance their game uh, with that. So the next thing is confidence and competitiveness. All right. Again, you have to have those. You got to be competitive. You got to have confidence in your ability to make plays. And then, like we talked about, the instincts and the football IQ. These are the things that I try to focus on every single day, all right? Every day, we'll focus on these, all right? And here's how. The way that we focus on these, all right, there's four types of drills. I break my drills down into four different categories, all right? So there are four categories that I focus on. One is the footwork category, all right? And we're going to do some type of drills. If I got 20 minutes a day, this is how I'm breaking down my individual drill especially in a camp period, all right? Now, the season may be a little bit different because you focus on more game plan type of things, but uh, for the most part, like I said, in camp um, and spring ball, I'll break it down to these four categories. All right? And I'll try to stick to that during the season, but again, it just uh, depends on how much time I might have um, during that practice in the season. So footwork drills, I'm working on the change of direction and the body control, all right? And we also focus on the eye control in those footwork drills, all right? And I asked my corner, how are we working on our eyes and footwork drills? Well, when I'm telling you to plant and break to a cone, all right, I want your eyes on that cone. So now I'm training your eyes, all right, to uh, to, to go to a specific place, um, to uh, the, the location, you know, the interception point or the point of attack. Uh, we're training the eyes in that situation, all right? The other thing is, is block destruction or, or block protection or whatever you call it and, and tackling. All right, we'll focus on those drills. We'll do those drills every single day, whether we're in camp, whether we're in uh, spring ball, or and especially during the season, 
we want to do some type of block protection and some type of tackling drill every single day. All right. Um, because again, you get, you get what you emphasize. All right. And then make a play drill is what I call make a play drills. Um, this is not only, and, and I got confidence there. Um, you can see that there, but it's not only working on confidence. All right. And, and we don't gain confidence just by, you know, going out and making a play one time. We got, we gain confidence through, uh, through repetition, all right? So you got a guy, you teaching him uh, in the make a play drills and he learns exactly where his hands should be, where his eyes should be. Um, how is he getting into that receiver uh, to cover that receiver? Uh, and he's he's doing that over and over and over again, all right? Now he's getting confident in his, in his ability, all right, to make a play, all right? And then the other thing that, um, the other type of drill that, that we focus on um, is the coverage specific, uh, the cover specific drills. All right. And that's teaching reads. All right. Where are my eyes? This is also helping them become more instinctive. All right. Because they're learning route concepts. They're learning different things, uh, within your system, uh, within our system here, um, they're becoming more instinctive. Um, it's helping their football IQ out. And then it's also helping them, uh, to be able to communicate a lot better. All right, in the cover specific drills, because when I tell a guy to come out and, and he's doing a cover specific drill, we may be in a, in a cover two, all right, to that side. But I want them communi communicating, all right. One, I want them communicating that coverage, even though it's a drill, all right. I want him to say it and, and act like he's talking to a safety if a safety is not there, or, you know, if I'm working with the safeties, I want him to give the call to that corner, um, even though the corner may not be in that specific drill. Um, with us at the same time, all right? But I do want them practicing and I do want them going through that communication every single time. All right, so so here, I'll go through the, the four categories that we talked about, all right? Um, the first one is footwork. And like I said, the development focus is change of direction, uh, body control, eye control, all right? Some of the drill, and there's a number of things that you can do um, you know, from a footwork standpoint or, you know, the change of direction standpoint, body control and all that. Um, there's a number of things you can do. Um, but, you know, some of the ones are stance and start and then uh, a thousand different change of direction and drills. And my thing is, I, you know, I don't, I don't try to, you know, invent or, or go through a thousand different drills. I want my guys to be, I, I want them to get all of the movements um, but we're not going to create new drills every single week just uh, because it may look good. You know, the whole purpose of doing drills is to get really good at it and not, you know, um, not just just come up with things that, that look cool um, to the to the public eye. All right. So some of the footwork drills, again, we'll just start with stance and start. Um, again, we're talking fundamentals, um, philosophy, but uh, we use a staggered stance. Um, in our stance and start, and with a square stagger stance. So I'm square to the line of scrimmage, and we use a stagger stance. Um, and, and I tell my guys, hey, if I'm a left corner, I'm in a left-footed stance, all right? If I'm a right corner, I'm in a right-footed stance. And what does that mean? That means if I'm a left corner and I'm in a left-footed stance, then my left foot is forward in that stagger stance, all right? And my right foot is back, all right? So we're going to have our weight on the balls of our feet, all right, we're going to bend at the angle near hip. All right, we want our chin over our toes. All right, and we want our elbows in tight with a slight bend in the elbows. All right, sometimes you see guys with their arms straight down. Uh, but again, we want a slight bend in those elbows because when we backpedal, then our, our, our elbows are bent. All right, so why not start in that position? The purpose of stance and start is, is to be, uh, you know, as accurate as you can, have a great first step. So you can put yourself in position to uh, to to cover that receiver, all right. So again, you know, again, we don't. I don't have much tape from um, you know my my um, new place here because uh, uh, you know we don't we didn't have but one spring practice, all right. But here's a here's a, a example of the stance and start, all right. And the way we do this, I start them out slow, all right. So we start out slow uh, in what I call a pace technique. So you can st see them starting out slow, all right? It's just a walk, all right? And then they speed up the tempo of their backpedal, all right, as we go here. All right, so starting out slow, 
and speed it up. All right. And the reason we start out slow is because of, uh, you know, for quick game throws. All right. Uh, and you can see me here. I'm running with them just to start out. All right. Just so they can react off of me uh, with, with uh, you know, with their with their pace. All right. Now, here's uh, here's another drill. This is just a, uh, a pedal box. All right. These are just everyday drills, you know, warm up drills. This is just a, a weave technique. I call it weave. Some guys call it angle pedal. All right. And, and what we do in this this drill here, we're using a weave technique. All right. You can see, let's focus on, on the guy that's that's right here on the sideline right now that's starting to go. All right. Start out with a back pedal. And now I just want to push with that left foot in this situation. I'm pushing with that left foot. All right. And then that left toe is clearing the heel of that opposite foot. So it's put, I'm pedaling at an angle. I want to stay square to the line, all right? I don't want to turn my body uh, when I do this because again, the whole purpose of weaving, all right, is so that you can break downhill on everything in front of you, all right? If the guy hadn't broke your cushion yet, all right? Now, once he broke your cushion, that's a totally different deal. But if he's still in front of me and I still got a, a good cushion, I want to stay square, all right? I want to use a weave so I can break at all angles, all right? I want to be able to break at, at every angle here, all right? So I want to be able to go this way if I need to, all right? I want to be able to go here if I need to and anything back down in front of me, all right? And as long as my hips are square, I can do that, all right? But if I start to get turned, the hardest way for us to turn is to go back this way, all right? So uh, again, that's why we want to stay square. All right. So a guy, just imagine a guy getting turned here, having to break back behind him. All right. So if he was facing this way when he opened up, all right, now it's just that much harder for him to break on the route that's breaking away from where he's turned. So again, that's why we want to, we want to stay square. All right. Again, we're pushing and clearing the, clearing the heel. All right. Toe clearing the heel. That's all we're doing in that situation right there. All right. All right, here's just uh, an example. All right, a guy, this is an example of, of the corner. You, you, uh, you remember I talked about the pace, start out slow. All right, so let's focus on the corner up top. Starts out slow, and now he's able to accelerate. All right, and now that hitch is just a three-yard gain. That's, that's really good football. From an off standpoint, all right, that's good ball. All right, and closing on that receiver, that's a three-yard gain. They will take that any day. All right. And again, this just went back to uh, some of the weave, the uh, weave technique here. All right, here's just a crossover run. And this is what I was talking about, body control. All right. Um, you know, I, I asked my guys, you know, hey, why do we work down this line? Every single DB coach in the country start on the sideline, all right, for some of the drills, and they work across the field. Well. Why do we do that? All right. The reason we do that is because we use this line as a measuring tool. All right. It's a measuring stick. So I know if I have great body control because I can stay right down that line. All right. If I'm all over the place and I'm off the line when I turn and run. All right. That means I need to spend a little bit more time working my body control. This is pretty good body control uh, by this corner right here. All right. That's pretty good body control. Now we want him to stay a little bit lower as he turns. All right. Keeping your pads down. Uh, but that's not bad as far as staying on the line and, and being able to control your body, all right? Pretty good. Not not bad there, all right? All right, here we go. Same thing, just coming back. So we worked across the field, and then we, uh, we just worked back across the field. All right, just different movements that we do. You know, this is... Um, breaking on, on on a post or a corner out here in this situation, all right, uh, right there. So this is a tight weave. And di again, these are just different movements that we use, just using a tight weave, uh, you know, being able to control your body and go back and forth across the line. Now, I want them to, to go a little bit smoother than 25. This should be a pedal, all right? This should be a back pedal, and we shouldn't turn. Uh, like 24 is here, not bad by 37 right there. Staying square for the most part, weaving across the line and weaving back. All right. All right. So when we talk about change of direction, I'm talking about change of direction now as far as 
uh, planting and breaking and, and driving on, on routes uh, in front of me or downhill, all right, uh, or on out breaking routes and that type of deal. So we want to be able, when we, when we change direction, we want to be able to sink our hips, all right? We want to plant with the opposite foot. So if I'm breaking to my right, all right, I want to plant with my left foot, all right, Keep, keeping my feet underneath me, all right? I want to point my toe and not just point my toe, I also want to point my eyes. All right, point my eyes to that interception point or that reception point, all right, and then accelerate. So plant with the opposite foot, uh, keeping your feet underneath you, all right, and not reaching out because when we reach out with that foot, all right, now we have no power to accelerate, all right? So that's why we want to keep that foot underneath, all right? That way I can push off of that foot and, and uh, accelerate to, to uh, the point of attack, all right? And then um, eyes to the target, like I just talk, talked about, uh, point your foot, point your eyes as well, and then we ex we explode or we burst to uh, to where we got to go. Those are the key things that my guys always hey accelerate or drive. You know, words uh, with explosion, um, so they they understand the urgency. One thing that DBs have to re uh, realize is we're always patient. All right, we should be patient. Uh, I talked about the pace concept. So when we're pacing, we're starting out slow, and then we'll increase the tempo of our pedal a little bit. All right. Now that's being patient. But once it's time to break and I know where he's going now, now it's time to drive and accelerate. And now that's when we become a thousand miles per hour. But we never want to backpedal uh, full speed as a defensive back. All right. Because, again, you know, it's, it makes it that much harder to break on things in front of me. All right. So here's a drill that, uh, you know, we I just call it an Xbox drill because I'm making an X. All right. Just different um, movements here. Uh, and, and we can do it different ways. We can bail and, and uh, you know, we can plant and drive. We can backpedal. We can plant and drive. We can flip our hips. We can do all kinds of things with the Xbox right here. This is just a simple one, backpedal. All right. And you can see I'm starting out with a pace again. Everything I do, if I'm teaching them pace, I want them to pace all the time. So the pace in here, speed it up. All right. Plant with the left foot. All right. Point your toe, point your eyes, and accelerate. All right. Same deal. Pace. Plant with the right foot, all right? Point your, point your toe, all right? Point your eyes and accelerate to, to, to finish through, all right? Uh, you can see just different, again, just different things here that we do for change of direction. Right here, this is more this is more lateral movement, all right? So working lateral, lateral quickness here, all right? Pushing off of that right foot as we see it, all right? And I don't want to click the heels. I want to keep my feet apart. Two is doing a lot better than 16 is here. All right, keeping the feet apart, coming back. All right, and now I had them open and run. All right, and, and plant and drive. All right, and this is good for for teams that run some squat, some cover two for a corner, or some press, even some press technique, where we uh where we play our, our mirror technique, but we're working flat down the line, and then it's good for opening the hips right here, and then planting and driving off of those different types of movements. All right. So again, just different things. And then we bring them the other way. This is more cover to us here. Um, we stay flat down the line and, and now we exit, all right? And we get visual saying that that quarterback is inside, all right? To the left of the screen as we see it. So now he's trying to exit, get some width and some depth, all right? And now the ball is thrown in front of him. So he plant and drive, all right? So it should look more like what the, the guy over here on the left looks like, all right? The guy over there on the right, He's planting and driving way too far outside. He should be straight downhill, all right, when he plant and drive in that situation, all right? So that's footwork part of it, all right? Now we'll move on to, to uh, physicality things, and, and one of the physicality drills that I have on here uh, is, is just our press and snatch, uh, and this is just a, you know, being able to defeat blocks, you know, not not being able to, uh, not well, not staying blocked, very long. We want to be able to, to press the receiver out um, and, and snatch off of that that block and uh, be able to rip past them and go make a play. So when we do that, we want our near leg forward. So when I make contact with a receiver, I want my near leg forward. All right. We want to bend in the knees. All right. And I, and eyes. We want our eyes below his chin. Meaning I want to bend my knees. All right. To get my eyes lower, my pad level low. All right. I don't want to bend. All right, at the at the waistline. All right, I want to bend my knees. All right, and when I make contact with them, all right, I want my near leg up. 
All right, we want uh, knees bent with our eyes below the chin, and we want to deliver the blow to that receiver. All right, so we make contact right at a line. Um, I want to be able to drive him back and, uh, and and lock him out. I want to press him out. All right, it's a bench press at that point. All right, and then I want to be able to get off that block. I want to be able to snatch him. All right, and I want to rip to my leverage. All right, and I want to clear my hips and clear my feet um, past that that receiver. All right, so I start him in a position here, in a fit position. Um, this is one of the things that uh, uh, just, you know, from a, it, and this can be a, this is a non-contact um, uh, drill here. Um, you can see you can do this without pass, but we press them out. We start in a fit position with our elbows bent. You can see they got a good knee bend, um, got their hips back, um, eyes are low, eyes are below the chin, and, and we want to start in a fit position so we can press them out. All right, we want to press them out. We want to press them out violently. All right, the guy that's working with me here over here to the left is a lot more violent with his press. All right, than these other guys. I want to press them out. All right, and you can see them snatch. I want them to snatch me down now. All right, snatch them down. Grab claw. All right, thumb should be up. I want my hands in the breastplate. Press them out. Snatch. Clear your hips. Clear your feet. Pass that that receiver. All right. One more look at it from a different angle. Not bad here by the guy in the middle. All right, that's a little bit more violent. All right, a little bit more violent with his press. All right, but you can see him grabbing claw, snatch, clear your hips and clear your feet. All right, really good job. Now, I like this one. This is one of my favorite ones because we actually do this on the sled, and this is a little bit more physical than the drill that we just did. All right, but you can see that he does a great job. Hands are inside. All right, and I like to use this this uh, particular sled right here because it forces all right your your thumbs to be up, all right, simulating being in the breastplate, and he's got to press it out. All right, he's got his hips back. That's a really this is a really good job. His eyes are lower than that sled right there. He's driving it back. Really good job with his feet. He recognized now he got to snatch, clear his hips, and clear his feet. All right, to mirror this guy who's simulating being the ball carrier right here, all right? This was, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to tackle part of it, all right, which we will do at times. Uh, but right here, we wanted to uh, just really emphasize getting off the block. So that's a good job by by him right there. All right, and not as good right here. I don't like the hips right here, how he rolled, it, rolled his hips up, all right? That makes it a little bit tougher to, uh, it, it gives that receiver a chance to, to, to block you or grab you and hold you. I never call that. All right, but if I keep my hips back, all right, now if they do try to grab, um, it's, it can be seen, um, you know, by the official. So you can see he does a good job of uh, clearing his hips, clearing his feet. But again, he's not able to snatch it as much because he, he rolled his hips up uh, on the contact. All right, not bad again. Same guy that we watched first. All right, it's good. Good strike, good delivering the blow. He got his hips back, snatch, all right and clear your hips, clear your feet. That's really good, all right? There's different type of tackling drills that you can do. You can do tackling circuits, uh, different types of tackling, tackles, uh, road tackle, uh, open field and sideline. Um, uh, that's that's different de deals that you can do there. Uh, open field tackling, one of the teach, you know, the teaching progression, um, some of the coaching points, you know, we want to be able to close the space of that, that, that uh, ball carrier. Uh, and first, we want to be able to establish our leverage, all right? And that's that's probably the most important thing is establish your leverage, all right? So if I'm in the open field, we got to be able to establish leverage and deny that ball carrier from beating me to my leverage. We want to force him one way. Don't want to be head up to him and give him a two-way go because you make it a, a tougher, uh, you make that tackle a lot tougher for you to have to make. So we want to establish leverage. All right, and then we want to close that space on the ball carrier, keeping our eyes on that near hip. All right, and then we when we make contact uh, with that with the guy, we want a near leg forward. All right, um, when we when we come to balance uh, on that tackle here. So this is just a drill, an open field tackle drill. I got them closing the space. I start them at the top of the numbers. You can see I got guys on the sideline. Uh, normally I would have them all the way on the sideline, but here um, this day I had them off about a yard and a half. But you can see them um, sprint, start to shimmy here, all right? And then just um, shoot and squeeze, all right? So you can see them shooting, and then you can see them squeezing at the end 
uh, on that ball carry. Good look at it up top. It's a really good job. And you can see in the shimmy, he's not stopping his feet, not breaking down, but he's closing the space. Keep closing that space. Keep closing that space, all right, and making that ball carry go one way, all right? And here's a progression with it. Uh, again, here's another look at this same one. Uh, but there is a progression with it uh, where we do give the ball carry now uh, the the, uh, the option to move in one direction. And you can see I'm directing that here. But he's still, the, the tacklers are still closing the space, shim, uh, shimmy, all right? They've established leverage now, all right? And now the guy up top does a really good job. Now he's established his leverage, all right? And the way we teach it um, here, where I am, all right, we keep our head uh, to our leverage side. So 37 does a good job up top, but you can see him still closing the space um, on the ball carry right there. All right. Um, Sideline tackle, again, you, you can see some of the things I, I talked about, established leverage, eliminate, eliminating the cutback, all right, and, and using the sideline as your help. So simple drill, and uh, I've started this thing 10 yards here in certain situations. I've started at 15 yards at certain situations, but this is important right here. Establish a leverage. All right. So just because he's wide right now, the ball carries wide doesn't mean I have to go as wide as he's going. All right. It's, it's much easier for me to come downhill first. And I usually stand right next to the ball carrier. All right. Not I'm, I'm a little bit further in this situation, but I stand uh, about a yard in, ahead of him sometimes and about uh, a yard outside of them. So they do get downhill first to establish that leverage and then finish on the ball carrier, shooting and squeezing. All right. And then the make a play drills. All right. Again, development focus is uh, ball skills. Uh, we want to create confidence and, and help them keep building confidence and keep adding on to the confidence that they have. And then learn how to time up a play. All right. Learn, learn how to time up the ball. All right. So I do two things when I'm in a control position. All right. And, and, and you can see I got control and no control. All right. So I call what I call control positions is when I'm in control of that route. All right. When I'm in control of the route, I can control it. I can feel that guy. All right. I can actually reach out and touch him. I am in a control position. All right. I'm in a I'm not in a control position or a no control position. All right. When I can't physically feel him. All right, when I can't re physically reach out and, and, and touch that receiver. So there's two different things. You can see the first one says lean and locate when I'm in a control position. All right, so lean and locate is what we'll do on the deep all up the field. Uh, uh, when I'm in a position where I can I can lean into that, that receiver, all right? And then uh, the second part of that is chest to chest. So I'm in a control position, but now the ball is underthrown or it's a back shoulder throw, all right? And that receiver's shoulder opens up. All right. Well, when his shoulder opens to look for the back shoulder throw as a DV, I want to turn and go chest to chest and be able to play through the, the back shoulder. All right. So those are the two control positions. And then the last one you can see is a no control position where I'm punching the pocket or basically playing through his hands. All right. So, again, lean and locate is, the you know, what we're trying to focus on here is ball skills, confidence and timing. Um, you know, we want to control the route, fill that receiver with our shoulder. All right and then get your elbows above your eyes to catch the ball at the highest point. And this is what we were doing. Um, you can see, you know, uh, you can do this in a in a uh, non-padded practice. You can do this anytime. You can do it in a padded practice. But um, I'm in a control position here, so I start both receivers behind the uh, I'm sorry, both guys behind the line, all right? And we just run, and, and we get in the control. You can see some hand, hand comeback going on here, all right? Uh, we don't focus on it as much, but but – you can, again, you can see him hand combat and, and, and uh, feeling that receiver with his shoulder right there. All right. Not a bad position. Locate the ball at the highest point right here. We don't have a, a ball in that situation. Same deals. Both receivers start behind the line of scrim, uh, behind the line. All right. I want to be able to feel him with my shoulder. And you can see he does a good job with his eyes, too. All right. Of not turning back too soon. He got to work on the timing of it. All right. They have to understand that receiver looks back for the ball. All right. He takes an extra couple steps before he gets his head around to look for the ball. All right. Again, that's going to just help you uh, keep you in a position to be able to make that play and not lose sight of the receiver or lose track of him. And then he just outrun you because you turned your head too soon. All right. 
this is just an example of God being in a in a controlled position right here. All right, uh, focus on the on the corner. Uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, the safety in the slot right here. All right, and just feeling him with his shoulder now. All right, he's squeezing that route, feeling with his shoulder now to get his eyes back. That's a really good job there by him. All right, no control. Now you can see the receiver starts uh, with his foot across the line now, and now we have to fight uh, to get in position here. All right, those hands come up. All right, those hands flash. Now I want to be able to punch through those hands. All right, I want to be able to punch the basket here through the hands. All right, uh, in, in that situation there. And I want to be violent through his hands as well. So you can see him with a ball here. All right, I just start the receiver out with a football. I, I screen ball. All right, he put the ball out, simulating catching the ball over his head. And I want that, that DB to be violent and punch through those hands and not just place your hand there. All right, you know, you got receivers now that can really, that can make those plays and have strong hands. So we got to be violent to be able to punch the ball out. All right, here's a quick PBU drill. Again, we're talking make a play drills. All right, they have to react. All right, securing the tackle and punching through those hands as well. So this this drill is really for things that are in front of you. All right. All right, and then the last thing here is is uh, just a guy just just closing there, the drill that we just watched. All right, breaking on something in front of him, securing the tackle, being violent, punching through those hands there. Yeah. All right. All right, and then a cover specific drill. Um, this this is actually the last thing here. Cover specific drill. Again, we focus on reads, instincts, uh, communication. Uh, we focus on all those things, and that could be what I call pass fits. You have run fits, and I call them pass fits. All right, working in a specific coverage um, and and fitting those routes up. All right, the way that they should be. They should be played um, and just, you know, some example, you could be playing cloud. You could be playing 3D. Uh, you could be playing your cover four stuff and, and uh, working in that situation. So that's a uh, cover specific drills. We have a number of different drills that, that we can do um, in that situation. So um, that's it. And, and this, this area recruiter there, I'm actually your area recruiter there in that Cincinnati um, South Southwest Ohio area. So that, that was from a, a different uh, deal here um, when I put up the area recruiter for our quarterback coach, uh, Coach Pike. Uh, but there's my information over here to the left. Um, if there's any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Email, cell phone, Twitter, however you prefer to communicate. So.